Hey what's up guys, it's Nick2 and today I'll be showing you guys what is probably the single strongest build that I've used in the entire game so far. There really isn't much to say other than to just point out how absolutely ridiculous the damage is here. There's no bugs or exploits with the setup, it is just straight up raw damage and it is incredibly good. This is my second time filming this because I had some computer problems, came back, filmed the video and my mic wasn't working, so my bad if my uh, explanations are not great. I'm a little bit tired, but feel free to drop a like if you like the video. Anyways, I did manage to nearly perfectly set this build up for max chaos level 20, like endgame stuff, but I'll also go in depth on how you can set this build up while you're leveling and throughout the early endgame process so that you guys can take full advantage of it right from the get-go without needing like perfectly optimized crazy gear. If you guys find the video helpful, please make sure to drop a like, helps me out a ton, and something like 80% like of people aren't subscribed, so feel free to subscribe as well. There will be tons more videos that I'll be uploading, so feel free to check out for those. There will also be more gameplay at the end of me doing a level 20 Chaos Chamber. Real quick before I get into it, if you guys are interested in some insanely high quality energy drinks, I'd highly recommend checking out advanced.gg. This stuff is going to give you a ton of energy without crashing, without any garbage sugar or anything like that. It has a really great nootropic formula which just helps keep you energized for a long time. This stuff actually tastes surprisingly good, has a great price point. Use my coupon code NICK2 for 10% off, helps support me a ton, and overall I would just recommend the product a lot, it has some really great stuff. So yeah. there's a lot to go over, Whew, I'm a little winded because I, this is my second time doing this. Okay. Okay, let's go over everything. So I'll try to not over explain things, but I want to give you guys in-depth explanations as to why we're using things, how they actually interact with each other, and how you can optimally set this up while leveling. A lot of the things that we're using are going to be more beneficial at end game rather than while leveling. So while leveling, I would highly uh, recommend um, experimentation, but a lot of these things are just flat damage increases which should benefit you no matter what. Real quick, if you guys would like a dedicated video to me talking about enchants, how they work, some special interactions with them, uh, everything that you need to know about them, which ones I think are best, please leave a like or leave a comment down below so I know that you guys would be interested in a video dedicated to talking about enchants. Alright, let's get into it. First off, I seem to always forget about the hero stats, uh, so let's just get it out of the way. You want to go village idiot on every single character, maxing out your crit damage is always going to be the best thing, and that's where we're going to spend our points into immediately here. I could be wrong about this, I tested crit chance last night, and uh, I looked in the UI, I tested against target dummies, blah blah blah. It seems to be that crit chance in the stat here only applies to spells. I don't know why that is, that seems to be what I anecdotally figured out, I could be completely wrong. Let me know if you have some hard earned proof or whatever on that, but for now I'm just going to be omitting crit chance and the build perform performs perfectly fine without that. For the rest of the skills, or the points rather, I'm maxing out my status damage because we're doing a lot of extra damage with uh, cryo and damage over time with our weapon, but alternatively these points aren't in particularly important. The rest of my points I put into spell cooldown. While leveling you could do spell cooldown, you could do skill cooldown if you're using your skills a lot and you like the way that they do damage early on. Later on our skills don't do much damage, they're kind of just a means to an end to proc a lot of things. Uh, extra max H HP and ward is cringe, uh, whatever else you want, I just went for the full damage version of this. Alright, in terms of your secondary classes, I'm sure you've seen from the title, we're going Berserker. The reason for Berserker is there's a lot of flat extra damage multipliers built into the class tree here that we're going to take advantage of. Um, they're all on their own multiplier, meaning we're going to scale our damage from 1 up to like 10 because everything is scaling off of itself multiplicatively, and that's why Berserker is so good for this. It's going to give us Enrage by default, which is going to increase our Frost damage, which is also going to pair perfectly with on Action Skill Enchants, which we'll talk about later. While leveling, I don't know if Berserker is optimal early on, maybe till like level 25 or something it isn't optimal, and instead you could go Stabomancer for the flat increased crit chance, and because there's some extra gun damage stuff built into Stabomancer very early on, and then once you're max level, you could swap back to Berserker, but I don't think you'll be at a huge disadvantage being Berserker early on, and the more that you play it, the better understanding that you have of it. So I'd recommend Berserker, but I just wanted to mention that because it might be a little bit more optimal during the early levels. Alright, so let's mention how Berserker works real quick, and then we'll get into it. So Spore Warden, by default, you're going to have the Mushroom Companion with your passive, right? I made a video using a completely companion build setup, so if you're interested in seeing that, I'd recommend watching it. This is not a companion build, obviously this is a gun damage build. So by default, this is going to give us our companion damage, and any additional Spore Warden power is just going to increase the damage of our companion, increase the damage of our abilities. For Berserker, getting extra uh, hero stats is going to increase your enrage duration, and how much extra frost damage enrage is going to give you. Anytime that you activate an action skill, you're going to proc enrage, and anytime you use a subsequent action skill, it's going to increase the uh, enrage timer. 
Procking and Rage getting this flat extra frost damage and specking a bunch into frost damage is the main reason that we're going for Berserker, but there's also some skill points very early on into the tree that are very good. First off, let's talk about what ability we're going to be using. We're going to be using Barrage. Not only is this going to pair perfectly with one of the enchants that we have, but overall I think that it is better because we're using a lot of enchants that work on on-action skill and on-action skill start, which are going to actually synergize perfectly with the passive with Rage of the Ancients, with uh, Barrage having a three charge system with a 30 second cooldown, and each action skill giving you 15 seconds of enrage duration, you're going to have 100% uptime on enrage, and also action skill uh, enchant procs, which is the majority of the damage that we're benefiting from from the setup, so that's why you go with this. Blizzard, the damage is trash, uh, the cooldown is trash, specking all the way into Blood of the Fallen is trash, take my word for it, I've tested both setups, you want to use Barrage. Getting into the skill tree, early on Eagle Eye, flat extra gun damage, this is the absolute best. Early on, if you want Spore Cloud for your Mushroom Taunting to help you out while leveling, that's an alternative option. And then we're going to go max points into Affinity for the extra ability damage. The gun crit early on I don't think is great, the reason for this is because this is multiplicative off of your base gun crit. Your base gun crit is only 5%. 50% of 5% is only going to be 2.5, so this is only increasing your gun crit by 2.5, which is like a 2.5% gun damage increase if you assume that your crit damage is only 100%. That's paper math. Um, I honestly don't think that this is all that great early on. We end up specking into it later because we just have the points, but early on I would kind of omit it and I would go into wind running first. This is going to increase your fire rate and movement speed pretty much by 24% almost all the time. And then we're going to go into Quiver of Holding, which is going to increase our magazine size by a fairly substantial amount. Now for the rest of the points, you could decide two things here. You could start investing further down into Spore Warden, or you could start investing into Berserker. I'm going to go for Spore Warden just for the sake of this, but while you're watching this and you look at the rest of the skill tree options for Berserker, you could decide what is better to go early on into. Girl of the Hunt we're ignoring because we don't care much about our companion. Cold Shot, I intentionally ignore its extra damage, but it scales off of gun damage, so it's going to have a lot of diminishing returns with pre-existing gun damage multipliers that you're getting in the form of Eagle Eye and other things on your weapon. Also, ADSing for 10 seconds to get this extra gun damage increase. Count me out. If you want extra damage and you want to kill, you want clips of you killing bosses in one bullet, this is an extra way to get some extra damage. We're ignoring this. The reason that we went for the ability damage isn't because our ability barrage ends up doing a lot of damage, it's because barrage seems to double dip with the way that play the angles works. How play the angles functions is gun crits have a chance of ricochet dealing nearby ability damage to a nearby enemy, or dealing reduced ability damage to a nearby enemy. Barrage is going to scale off of your gun damage, so what happens is you crit an enemy, it ricochets, it does ability damage, but it's also going to do barrage ability damage, which scales off of both ability and gun crit. This is going to make, or and gun damage. This is going to make your play the angles do a ridiculous amount of damage. It does more damage than your single target shots. I'll hit a guy for 14k, and then this will ricochet and hit a guy for 100k. One of the main reasons that this ends up doing so much damage is because you're getting wrath of nature. Whenever you deal ability damage, it's going to increase the damage that that enemy takes. That's also another reason why having barrage with the three charges is really good. If you're using blizzard and there's like five badasses spread out, you use a blizzard on this guy, you kill that guy, the blizzard is gone. Now you can't take advantage of wrath of nature without having the ricochet proc. But with barrage, you can just have it up all the time and again, full advantage of rage of the ancients. Like I mentioned before, gun crit isn't all that great, but we literally don't have anything else to spec into. Early on, you could go Thrill of the Hunt instead for your companion doing good damage, because early on it probably scales pretty well, but later in the end game, your companion isn't really going to help you all out all that much in terms of damage. Then, as soon as we can, we want Max into Wrath of Nature. We have some extra points here. We're going to go Headhunter for 25% extra gun damage against crit hits. And then now we need some more points, so we just put another into Bullseye. But again, you could do Thrill of the Hunt, you could do Spore Cloud, you could do uh, Medicinal Mushroom with your Mushroom resing you, Cold Shot if you're a psychopath that likes aim aiming down sight, or uh, Bounty of the Hunt leveling up for that extra action skill cooldown rate. The gun crit is pretty bad. I do it just because it's a minimal amount of damage increase, and none of the other things I think increase your damage, but I could definitely see myself using other things while leveling up because the scaling is different. And then we get play the angles, which I've talked about already. The reason that rate, uh, Berserker ends up being so good is we get flat frost damage right here, and that's going to be increased while we are enraged. And then we get Icebreaker, which increases our damage when an enemy is close to being frozen or slowed. Using a cryo weapon, 
uh, this is pretty much active all the time and it is its own multiplier again another thing that is its own multiplier is the old ways whenever you're close to an enemy 30 percent extra damage its own multiplier that's going to scale off of everything that you already have all this gun damage all this ability damage all this ricochet damage all the things that are in chance that's going to scale on top of it Double dipping into all of th these things is why we're able to take our damage from 1 to like 50. This is why it's so good. And the same thing with Icebreaker. I have a class item here that's going to give it 50% rather than the 30%, but you'll have almost full uptime on this. The rest of your skill points, you don't really care about any of this stuff in here. You can kind of do whatever while you're leveling up if you want the extra survivability with Unyielding, if you want some Enrage Duration, if you want maximum health increase, if you want reload speed, if you're using a cryo weapon, this would actually probably be what I spec into. If I wasn't using my current weapon, I'd probably spec into reload speed. You could do a frost efficiency with the movement speed, which is what I end up specking into because I want the uh, freeze to happen faster. And then later on, you could go relentless rage so that you save your souls a little bit better. I end up just picking unarmored defense here. This is particularly perfect with cursed wit this is going to reserve part of your ward to where pretty much all the time you only have half of your ward and it can't regen past that point but it's going to increase your maximum health this is perfect because then our ward is never going to be full and it's going to break easier which is going to give us extra damage which is exactly what we want with this build i have a point left over you can do literally whatever you want with it i think i went with the reload speed and the weapon swap speed just cause but like i said um the frost efficiency is not going to be all that great while leveling so you could do whatever but this is what's going to translate to just a little bit more damage so that's why i went with it but it's not significant Whew, i feel like i need a breather all right let's talk about weapons and then i'm i want to explain the enchants because the enchants are actually probably the most important part of this build and one of the reasons that we're able to scale it so much is because we get a lot of other multipliers with our enchants so first off we're going to be using the liquid cooling this is the best weapon in the game period it does cryo damage it works perfectly you you freeze enemies like that the base damage is ridiculously high as you can see alternative options while you're leveling any cryo weapon that is hyperius tdor or dala that is either a times four or a times five it's going to have the shot pattern right here these things shoot insanely fast they do a whole bunch of damage that's what i'd recommend going for alternatively queen's cry is going to be really good pretty much any sort of cryo weapon that you can get your hands on early on is what you want to be focusing on but ultimately liquid cooling is your end game for the uh, melee weapon here i would recommend immediately getting a pickaxe this is going to anytime that you pick up gold it's going to increase your movement speed spell cooldown rate and action skill cooldown rate so that we have more barrages we have more buff meister uses we're using buff meister because this is just going to increase our damage flat out i have a frost one here because again we're going all into frost damage Alternatively, uh, you could get a fire one that has two charges. I don't know if you can get frost with two charges. That would be really good. Alternatively, any form of buff meister is, is fine just to increase your damage a little bit. No, this does not bug anything out. Also, you could use any other skill you want. If you feel like it while leveling, you could use an ice spike because you're getting a lot of extra frost damage. And early on, those spells may do a good amount of damage, but I use a buff meister just because I like using it and I like the movement speed, but kind of up to you what you want to use. Uh, actually, we'll talk about enchants last, which I think is the most important thing, so definitely stay till that because that's really important, but I want to get over all the gear first just so it feels more, uh, I don't know, consolidated. Uh, getting into the necklace, you want frost damage and berserker power. Berserker power is going to give you extra frost damage, which again, thought it's on multiplier here. Uh, as long as we don't go over 100%, there's no diminishing returns there. My Berserker power is 59%, so while we're enraged, get an extra 60% uh, frost damage there. So overall, that's insanely strong. Alternatively, you could get flat gun damage, or you could get um, Spore Warden powers like okay, but I don't think it's all that great, honestly. Uh, ideally, gun damage, Berserker power, or frost damage, Berserker power. And then you could get like magazine size and all damage dealt. The second roll here on the bottom, I don't think there's anything good for necklaces, or at least I haven't found anything good, so don't worry too much about it. For the shield, you want a Cursed Wit. This is going to increase your uh, damage reduction and give you 100% increased damage dealt whenever you are nearby an enemy. If you could get extra fire rate on the bottom here as this roll, that would be ideal. I think that's what you can get, or you get max health, something like that. You want a Cursed Wit. Our shield is always going to be at uh, 50%, so it's going to get knocked off pretty fast, and then we're going to get that extra damage. Pairing very well with Cursed Wit is any uh, ring that's going to give you while ward is not full. Effects are increased by 100%. This is going to be perfect with um, us having 50% of our shield, as you can see on the bottom left, because we're going to have access to this all the time. It's 34% flat increased damage. I have pistol crit damage. You'd probably want pistol crit or pistol crit chance or all damage dealt or gun damage. I have action skill cooldown rate. I'm not too mad about it, but that's what you pretty much want. 
In terms of your class item, this is pretty important. There are two options here. One of them is going to increase your Wrath of Nature, so you get an extra 50% uh, here, 50% extra damage. I have found that to be actually worse than the one that I'm using right now, because mine increases my Berserker power more, but it's also going to increase my damage against enemies while they are frozen, which is 20%, and then I also get one more point into the Frost Efficiency, which I like. But ultimately, I think it's just because my roll is a little bit better. I think they're pretty similar, but my roll has Fire Rate, Gun Crit Chance, and All Damage dealt, rather than the other roll having Gun Damage and Movement Speed and Fire Rate. And All Damage dealt is its own multiplier, so it's going to scale more. Total Crit Chance and Crit Damage. Um, increasing the crit damage but reducing the crit chance I think is a pretty good roll here and if I could have that on the bottom of mine that would be ideal but increasing my ability damage by a flat out amount because I do have some base increased melee damage with like you know the bayonet on my gun or whatever that is pretty good overall that's what you want to be looking for any sort of uh, class item that's going to increase wrath of nature icebreaker the old ways cold snap or potentially even eagle eye, that's probably what you want to go for. In terms of enchants, these are insanely important. As you can see here, I have for 10 seconds after activating barrage, gun and ability damage has a 25% chance to cause an explosion. This explosion is on its own damaging thing. It doesn't count as gun or ability damage, it counts as its own thing, so it takes advantage of all damage multipliers for some reason, and this ends up doing more damage than our flat gun damage, which is ridiculous. So, as you can see right here, if I just shoot my gun normally, 20, 26k with no buffs, by the way, um, just shooting normally, nothing's really happening. And then if I proc my uh, ability damage, as you can see, I'm just doing a, I'm doing 61k per shot now, by the way, but also exploding over and over and over and over again, which does a crazy amount of damage. So this is what you want to go for immediately in terms of enchants. That's going to be your overall best enchant. Secondary to that is on action skill start, increase damage up by 20%. This is my other liquid cooling. I have two, by the way. Uh, this is just going to give you flat extra damage. One thing that is very broken with this build is while action skill is active, increase elemental damage. Now, you might be wondering, your action skill isn't active. You're just using barrage that lasts for half a second. Anytime that enrage is active, that counts as action skill being active. So you're going to benefit from the 35% elemental damage here and from the 50% frost damage here. This is 85% damage. The frost damage is a little bit diminishing returns because you have so much frost damage already. You could alternatively make this poison damage to make your um, poison here scale even more. And then that might be a little bit more beneficial. Hard to tell really what the math is on that because you're probably hitting more shots per shot with the frost but the poison does more damage and maybe it would scale more because there's less diminishing returns because you already have like well over 100% frost damage. It's minor, whatever. And then you have on action skill start increased gun damage by 40%. I think this would be better spent um, on action skill start increased damage dealt by 20%. It's hard to tell. I'd have to check the math on that. But either way, you have 100% uptime on 50% frost damage, 40% gun damage, 35% elemental damage, and this insane damage from here. Some alternative options are action skill start increased damage dealt, and then on uh, spell cast you get frost damage, on action skill increased status effect and damage, and then another one, uh, like I mentioned before, poison, and then there's also after you get a kill you get some movement speed, which is just pretty much fun. On action skill start spell damage, not very good, and then another one on spell cast increased damage dealt by 15%, or on spell cast increased frost damage dealt. Those are all the good ones, but the setup that I have here I think is pretty much ideal. That's pretty much it for the build, now I want to show you guys some gameplay. Dude, my, my throat is absolutely torqued, man, but if you, if you liked the video, please please drop a like. I've been talking too much and having to record this twice is rough. So alright, I'm going to make sure that I am on the intense difficulty here, and we're going to go into a Chaos 20. Uh, this gameplay is going to be pretty bad. The main reason that I'm doing this is I just want to show you guys unedited, just so you can see that the damage by default is really good. I'm going to end up editing it a little bit after this first floor. I just want to show you guys, uh, with no edits or anything, that the gun damage, like right off the bat, is really crazy. As you can see, I'm just absolutely obliterating this um, statue. But the cast level gameplay, it ends up get kind, getting kind of boring, so I don't really want to, you know, make you guys sit, sit through a whole bunch of it. I'm just going to run around and kill some guys real quick. Just so you can see the raw power of it, and then I'm going to edit a little bit further in. There's some points where I'm actually killing guys a little bit more. I want to get some good some good ricochets off. Uh, what does happen a lot is uh, because, you know, you're playing this game, you do die to nonsense all the time. That's just kind of how it goes. Um, but you kill things fast enough to where it usually isn't going to matter all that much. I don't even remember what half of these things do. I'm just hoping that I get, like, a good boss by the end. I really wish there was higher mob density then that would make play the angles 
significantly better, and it'd also just be more representative of how powerful the build is. I could like run around and show you guys stuff. That guy's immune. Just gonna just gonna ignore him for now. Just running around, very, very fun gameplay. I wonder if there's a quartz anywhere. Probably not. I feel like this is really boring to watch because I'm just running around <laughs> trying to find enemies. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, dude. I just wanna I just wanna show you guys. Alright, this is this is a little bit better. There's there's some more guys here. You melee how do you kill this guy? Oh, I see. Alright, goodbye. So as you as you can see the damage is really good. I'm just gonna edit to where there's you can see me actually killing enemies because this is just this is just really boring. You're not allowed to see me die, so I'll, I'll kill that guy just so you know that I didn't die. Alright, usually there's a bit more mob density on a on a floor like this, so see if we can get some good kills. I think I picked the wrong affix. I didn't know that bulwark one existed. I think I've always ignored it. But um, as you can see, we popped that. We didn't even, he didn't even have ability damage done to him. He didn't even get hit by the 54% there. And he still just absolutely shreds. And everything else just kind of just dies too. My movement speed is really, really high. I kind of just fly around. Um, just so you guys know, I'd recommend buying a uh, gun damage in these, by the way. Uh, just so you know, you can tell if you're enraged on the left side of your screen, so pretty much just use your uh, spell shot, or on either side, rather. You can see that you're, like, red and icy. So anytime that you um, aren't enraged, I'd recommend popping that. Also, uh, the extra damage that you get, the 30% from the Berserker spell tree, is very noticeable. So if you're ever far away from an enemy, and you notice that your damage is a little bit lower than normal, it's probably going to be because you were far away from him. But as you can see... The damage is kind of just dumb. You you kind of just kill things. I'm gonna wait till I get some actually good uh, gameplay here. Oh oh, never mind, never mind, never mind. This this floor should be pretty good. This floor should be pretty good. Usually, usually these ones are fairly helpful. I don't think you'll get to see the ricochets kind of pop off all that much because of the that stupid affix that I picked, picked or curse, as some will call it, as most will call it. I'm just a, a WoW player. I wish that um, it just spawned like a hundred guys at once and I could shoot one of them and then it would all just ricochet and just destroy the whole map. That would be pretty cool. Here, do we get a boss guy? See, that guy just falls over real quick. And now I'm flying. Now I'm a zoomer. Let's bully this Dragon Lord statue. Alright, goodbye, sir. That objective complete. No, no big deal. Look, that guy just got hit for 160k without me even looking <laughs> I got decimated? Oh, I got decimated because I ran into the water? How dare I? I'm very bad at the game. How dare you run into water when you just shot your weapon? Don't you know that that's going to instantly kill you? What a clown I am. Nothing really interesting has been happening. It's kind of just the same. I look at an enemy, I shoot them, and then they kind of die. Uh, what boss did we get? Alright, so... This is fairly good. Oh no, it's Volcanar. Dude, this is like the worst guy that we could get, man. We we kill him really fast. Like as you can see, we instantly break this <laughs> we instantly break the spots. My mouse went off of my monitor. He literally dies instantaneously, right? But then he does this this little cringe phase. But um I'm sure you guys have fought this guy and it feels like you can't kill him instantaneously, so that's pretty much what this looks like with this build. I mean the damage is <laughs> It's kinda dumb. Um I wish I got a different boss, to be honest, for the for the intro clippage, but that's okay. Um, so look, we just we literally just have to sit here and wait forever. If there's a different boss that you guys think that I should start doing for gameplay, feel free to uh, let me know. Is he, like, damageable yet? Yeah, there he goes. We just look at him and, you know, goodbye, sir. A lot of those shots aren't aren't crits and aren't even hitting him. But I think, I think he died. I think he died a little bit. You can see all the poison damage they're hitting for, for 26k per shot without uh, any buffs up. You can see that the poison damage is a lot of damage. Do I have to shoot that bomb? Oh, is that how that fight works? Maybe that's maybe that's why I, I take forever on this guy. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. This is a no-judge zone. And he falls over. And that's uh, pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. I'll, or I'll, I'll, I'll open the chest. I'll, I'll open the chest and you guys can see if I get anything good. Alright, I spent some on a necklace and some on a ring. Let's uh let's speedrun this. 
Alright, no gun damage. Nope. Dark Magic Graveborn. Oh, that's a good uh, companion one. Easy clap. But not for this setup. Uh, Frost Damage Berserker Gun Mag Size. A lot of you guys would probably like that, but not, not good enough for my standards. Um, that's pretty much it. This is probably good for... Oh wow, this is extremely good for a companion build. Okay, we take that. Uh, two companion items in one run. The game is telling me to play my Graveborn. Alright, I'll see you guys later. Peace.